Hey there, I'm Henry. I'm one of the co-founders of Reclaim. And today I'm going to be showing you a pretty exciting update that we have uh, for scheduling links. Um, this is actually one of our most requested feature, maybe our maybe our most requested feature. Um, and it is called round robin links. Um, so this is basically the ability to set up links that will book with any of some number of participants. So um, if you want to kind of pull together your team and make it so that attendees can book with one of those people, um, but still kind of see everyone's availability so that they can get kind of the maximum booking opportunities, but still end up only booking with one person, um, that's what round robin is for. And today I'm going to show you how to use round robin, kind of what the big changes are here, um, as well as how to kind of use it for different scenarios. And I'll show you kind of how we've we've built different types of functionality into the feature um, to really unlock pretty much all the use cases that we could think of and that we've heard from our customers uh, about for for round robin links. Um, just before I get started, um, one thing to note, round robin links are available for anyone who is on a business or enterprise plan, um, as well as folks who are on a trial. Um, so with that, I will uh, pull up some links here. So you can see I've got a few that have been set up already. And so I'm just going to kind of pull up this interview panel one. This is actually a great example to start with. Um, so round robin links, in many ways, they, they you'll create them in, in pretty much the same way that you create any other scheduling link. If you go back here and you hit new link, you'll get a kind of fresh link here. And really the big difference is where you're kind of adding your different organizers. Um, so I'll kind of go back to this interview panel one and show you what we've done here. Um, so just like other, you know, any other booking link, it's got a title. This is the, the title we're going to use for the actual booking page itself. Um, we've got this nice little template here that you can use um, for naming the events. So if you want to automatically pull in the attendee's name or the person who's going to be hosting the meeting's name, you can do that from here. But really, the kind of big difference has has come in the form of this this section here. Um, so you can see here, I've got this thing called a round robin pool set up. And what this pool is going to do is it's actually going to look across all three of these people's time, even though you know Tabitha's in Eastern time and Molly's in Pacific and Greg's in Pacific. It's going to take essentially the union of all of those times. So essentially, all the unique times that are available across all three of these people. And then when I go to book on this link, it's only going to end up booking time with one of them. Um, and so the goal here is to kind of load balance meetings across multiple participants, but also to make it very friendly to your attendees. So if you've got a mix of people who are in East Coast time or Pacific time or sort of a mix of time zones, and you want to offer up kind of maximum availability, maximum times um, to your attendees, Round Robin is a great way to do that, of course, in conjunction with uh, priority on scheduling links, which I'll come back to here in a second. And so to set up round robin, all I'm going to do is basically pull people in. So let's say I, I forgot AJ. I want to add AJ into the round robin pool. So what I just did there is added AJ into what we now call the organizer list. Organizers are added onto every single meeting. So even if I'm, I'm creating a round robin link and one of these people gets booked, um, AJ will always be added. Um, you can opt to make them required or not. And all that means is that AJ will still get added, um, but he won't have his availability considered, right? So if I'm going to you know, make him required, his availability will be considered. And you can see also, and this is a nice little um, moment to kind of highlight this, you can see that AJ's also been made the host when we made him required. And this is sort of a new concept for scheduling links where... Um, now meetings have a concept of of you know who's the host, who's the person who we assume is going to be organizing the meeting, and who's like Zoom integration and location information we're going to use. You can see here if I make AJ optional, and now we don't assume that he's going to be hosting the meeting. Now we have every one of these people on the round robin as the host because in theory any one of them could be a person who's hosting the meeting. Um, one thing you'll notice is if I add like the Zoom integration here you'll see that I don't get any warnings because we've actually got a Zoom integration set up for everybody. And so if you don't have that Zoom integration set up, you'll see some little warnings here that indicate um, whether, you know, the fact that we don't have Zoom information for everyone and therefore we can't add the integration. We basically never want you to get into a situation where um, you can't provide a valid location to your uh, to your attendees. Um, so if you know one or more people don't have the Zoom integration set up, you'll still be able to set up the link and save it. But when people go to book, they won't see the Zoom integration. Um, and obviously things like Google Meet, those work for everybody. You can add custom locations and those will work for everybody as well. 
Um, so, so lots and lots of options for locations. But returning to round robin, you can see here, I've kind of got this, this setup now where AJ will be added onto every single meeting. And then any of Tabitha, Molly, Greg, or Daniel will be added to the meeting as well. And so what this is really going to look at is a union of availability across these four people and AJ will be considered optional. So it won't really consider his availability at all. Um, I can also add multiple organizers. So if I said like, hey, I, I want to have, you know, this is an interview panel. I want to have AJ on there and then actually want to have Patrick and I want him to be required. And so you can see now Patrick is the host his availability will be considered, and then it will add any one of these people. And you can sort of imagine different use cases and scenarios you might use this for, right? There might be an interview panel where you want one of several people to interview someone. And you might want to make sure that like your recruiters on there and the manager is on there. And maybe you want to mark them both as optional just so that you know their availability doesn't kind of gum up the works and make it hard for people to find time. Um, but you might want to make one of them optional if you're like, hey, I really need Patrick there to kind of kick off the meeting and make sure that um, things get kind of moving in the right direction. Um, same is true of sales calls or customer support calls. Um, you can really imagine like all the different kind of ways in which you can use this. Um, of course, if you don't want to have any organizers, if you just want this to be a, a round robin meeting, let's say I said, you know, I'm actually going to add Patrick and AJ into the pool. Now I actually have a what we would call a pure round robin meeting. This means that there's no organizers, no one who's going to be required to be on the meeting besides one of these round robin people. So there will only ever be one person from here that gets booked. Um, I, I talked a little bit about video conferencing and location. Most of this works exactly the same way that it did before. Um, but priority is another thing to note here. Priority, just like on team links, will be set at the link level. And this is really powerful because this means that you can create a link that say, you know, is for, for really urgent customer escalations and you can mark it critical. And this is actually going to look at all high priority and lower things on every single one of these people's calendars, in addition to all of their free time, and show them as available during lower priority times. And so this is a really powerful way to even go further and really extend that availability across multiple people. Um, and then everything else that you're going to see here is pretty similar. Um, you know, all the same options that you know and love about reclaim scheduling links just for round robin. Um, the last thing I'll note here is you can you can kind of notice uh, I'm actually in this demo account here. This is Kevin Malone, and you can see I'm not anywhere on this link, right? I'm I'm not an organizer. I'm not in the round robin pool. With this set of changes, what we've also unlocked is the ability for you to create scheduling links on behalf of your teammates. And this is also very powerful because if you're a manager, let's say, of a support team, or you're a manager of a sales team or a recruiter, and you want to be able to stand up a scheduling link that can be used across an interview panel or used across a sales team or a support team, you can do that without having to ask those people to go set it up for themselves. right? So you can see I'm not added in here at all. I could add myself if I'd like to. Um, where am I here? Uh, Kevin Malone. So I added Kevin Malone in and now I'm the host, right? I can I can add myself in as an organizer, but I can also just remove myself. Um, so this is a really, really cool advancement in terms of um, scheduling links in general. You can now do, do this for team links. You can do it for really any scheduling link that you create. You can see here, I can just like literally create a link that includes Tabitha and Molly and Greg and AJ and Daniel, this is now what we would call a collective link where it's looking across everyone's availability and I'm not in here at all, right? So I can I can kind of get a lot more control over how I create scheduling links on behalf of other people. Um, any scheduling links that you've created uh, that you've been added to, I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'll open this back up here in a second. Any scheduling links, any round robin links that you've created that you are... Um, uh, the owner of, you're not going to see them in this link. But this is what these two sections here are really for are any links um, that you have been added to as an attendee or as a co-organizer, but they are not going to show ones that you've created. Ones that you've created, whether they're round robin or uh, team links or anything else are going to be all in this section here um, under my links. Um, so with that, let me open up this interview panel one since this will probably help to uh, kind of show you what the booking experience is like. So there's a couple really nice little changes here. One is you can see now there's this nice group name at the top. And this is a nice way, like let's say that you had, you know, reclaim customer success. This is probably a better example to show you this. 
you know, you can see now I get this nice like group name up here. And this is a really nice way to kind of name your name your groups around like teams or sort of functional areas in the business. So you can see we've kind of added this nice little indicator here that persists throughout booking. Um, on round robin links, we're not going to show avatars because we don't really think it's important to your attendees that they see every single potential person that they're going to meet with. They probably just want to know like, hey, what's the what's the group? What's the kind of general gist and purpose of this meeting? Um, and can I kind of find time? So you can see here, there's a whole bunch of times that are available. And that's because Reclaim is looking across uh, essentially, again, this union of availability. And I've got times that start as early at 9 a.m. in Pacific and go as late as 6.30 p.m. Right, and that's kind of speaking to the fact that I've got this this really broad set of people that I can book with. If Reclaim sees that there is an overlap, like if two people are available at the same time, since I've got lots of people in Pacific, that could totally happen. We're going to prefer the person um, who has fewer meetings booked with that link. So we're going to try to be a little smart about how we make those trade-offs. The same is true of rescheduling. Um, if you go to reschedule a meeting, as I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, we will prefer trying to get you booked with the person that you met with originally, um, just, just to kind of keep things consistent. Of course, if that person's not available or you pick a time that uh, isn't, isn't available for them, uh, we're not going to rebook with them. And instead, we'll just optimize for trying to get you booked as soon as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and book some time here, and you'll kind of start to see what the booking experience is like. So I'm going to go ahead and pick 4 p.m., and we'll see who I end up booking with. So it's uh, me. I'm actually going to use a different name for this. Uh, it's going to be me, Henry, and I'm not going to add a message or anything like that. And you can see here, I'm now booked with uh, Greg. Um, and you can see that I've got this, uh, I've got this meeting that's been booked at 4 p.m. Um, if I were to go ahead and reschedule this, you know, and I'll show you kind of how how we're thinking about this problem. If I were to go reschedule this, and let's say I'm like, actually, you know, I want to meet on Friday now at uh, you know 5.30 p.m. And I'm going to keep the same information. You can see it preferred Greg, even though lots and lots of other people are probably available at the same time. We're preferring trying to keep you booked with the same person. Um, so this is a really, really powerful new feature. It's a really great way to kind of set up scheduling links to really operationalize different parts of your business, whether that's recruiting or sales or support, or even things like design sessions, right? You can kind of imagine a whole variety of scenarios where you want a whole group of engineers or a whole group of salespeople or a whole group of support people or a whole group of designers to kind of be an any of, right? Like to be, you know, you're sort of like, hey, I don't really care who on this team meets with this person. I just want to make sure that someone is available to meet with them. Um, and so this is just a really cool way to kind of unlock different use cases with scheduling links. And again, because you can now create these on behalf of other people, um, it's a really powerful way to create links for your team when you want them to kind of start setting up these sorts of sessions. Um, so that's everything from me. We're really excited to share this with you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in support and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.